Greetings and salutations, Dota fans. Welcome in once again, the second of our four best of three day here on the HyperX D2L, the opening salvo of the playoffs. Moving ahead now, the West continues as Na'Vi meets the winner of our first match, Fnatic, here on our second match of the day. This is a big rematch for these two teams. They squared off in Dream League. We saw how that came out that time around. Fnatic wanked in that matchup. Looking for some revenge here, but it's all on the line. Every match throughout our bubble race playoff system does have your entire playoff life on the line. Fnatic, who finished in fourth, uh, fourth place overall in our group standings, managed to get past VP in the first match of the day. Na'Vi looks to take them on. Winner of this will advance to play Team Liquid in a best of five coming up on Thursday, the winner of which will join Alliance in uh, Las Vegas as Western Rep. Let's take a look at the two lineups, see how they stack up. Na'Vi scarcely needs an introduction. They're led by Puppy on the support jungle with a boast on hard carry, Dindy in mid, Funnick in the offlane, and Kuro on hard support. As we can see, they finished quite strong, 5-2, and two, notching 10 points across that across that time. The surprise loss really coming against Team Liquid, who finished in second place overall and again awaits the winner of this match. The other side, Fnatic. We've already seen them in action once today. They looked very good against Vertus Pro, and VP, to be honest, even though they were playing with two standards, actually put up a pretty decent fight. But Fnatic is a team that can... They, they really have a lot of flexibility and versatility in how they want to come at you. They can run some pocket strategies. They can run some things that they kind of specialize in. One of the few teams that consistently... Uh, continues to draft IO and run those sorts of lineups. They also have a lot of things they like to do, little gimmicks they like to, to put into their play, but they're very, very good at just playing grinded out Dota if they if uh, they anticipate you're trying to gimmick them out of a win as well. They finish in fourth place, as mentioned, and uh, looking to make it two wins in a row on the day and looking to fight their way through. Na'Vi, though, everyone kind of picked them to be the other team to come out of our Western bracket. They had a little bit of a lackluster performance, again, dropping that surprising series to Team Liquid. They're going to be looking for revenge now and looking to put themselves in a place to get some revenge coming up on Thursday. I'm your host, Aaron AC Chambers. Thanks for being a part of the show, guys. I'll be joined by Ben Merlini Wu, as always. Again, our second best of three on the day, our final Western series of the day, as we'll be switching to our Eastern series starting at 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time following the conclusion of this series. That'll be uh, Tonku versus DK to get us rolling. So still a lot of Dota ahead of us, and the draft already underway for this series. We'll be right back here on the HyperX D2L. Stick with us. And we're underway for game one of our second best of three here on our Ten second matchup remaining. in the Western Bubble Race Fanatic taking on Fnatic Na'Vi. And already a couple of back. interesting developments here in the draft for game one. Io snagged away by Na'Vi. They go ahead and grab Chin for Puppy now. Fanatic Navi answered that um, that Io pickup with an Enchantress and a Visage. Seeing the Visage, no surprise. That early pick Enchantress almost Fnatic certainly meant to, to serve as a deterrent to a Chin pick from Na'Vi, but Chin... Well, Navi just likes Chen. Puppy certainly likes him, and they're going to go ahead and run him anyway. To break down this draft, and of course, Linda's insight and analysis as always, welcome in once again, Ben Merlini Wu. And I'm really excited to see these uh, these two teams match up against Ben. Uh, uh, once again, Ben, I mean, we already saw them in action again in Dream League. And uh, really, I really want to see what Fnatic took away from that, as they did come up quite short in that matchup on land. But this time around... Uh, looking for a little bit of payback and a chance to knock out one of the heavy favorites to come out of our Western division. Yeah, I mean, they did 3-0 Navi the 
day before, I believe, or two days before. So mm -hmm. Fnatic definitely has what it takes to beat out Na'Vi. Fnatic and Na'Vi are have both been a little bit inconsistent recently. This should be a pretty action-packed game. Fnatic going for a very early Enchantress pick, and Na'Vi going for a very early EO pick. And uh, with the Chen pick up too, this is going to be this is going to be quite the early game. Oh yeah. And time. what I'm really interested to see, of course, is Enchantress versus Chen. I mean, it's so tough. Uh, for it, depending on who's going to be on the offensive, and as you mentioned, having the IO with the Chen, almost certainly going to be Navi, who's looking to set the pace early on. But trying to execute a Chen base lineup into an Enchantress is going to be able to steal your creeps and be able to disjoint things quite a bit. And uh, certainly she's a hero along with the Visage, who can get active on their own. So this should be, a, I would imagine, an early game with a whole lot of movement. And, of course, things will begin to break apart entirely once IO hits six. Well, and let me rephrase that. Could potentially be the... Um, what we're looking for, or Fnatic at this stage with Enchantress and Visage. We've seen Enchantress Ten picks seconds, fit really? very well into heavy team uh, team fight uh, oriented lineups based Five, on nothing six, but the survivability eight. she brings, not just for herself, but to her teammates with nature's attendance, Navi and just how deceptively pick. much damage she can pour out with early impetus if she does find her levels very soon. So Fnatic will go ahead and grab up the Alchemist. We saw Hani run an Alchemist uh, in mid earlier today. We'll see if that'll be the case for the second time. Mm -hmm. uh, I think they're going to have to go with something a little bit more aggressive in the mid lane. I mean, Honey is more of a farm and up type player. I don't really see him as an alchemist player. His puck is pretty good. His storm is pretty good. Invoker, I think, is has become one of Honey's trademark heroes. And alchemist just doesn't really seem to fit that well with his play style. Yeah, I agree. Um, we kind of saw that a bit. He did get under farmed in the face of God's puck in the first series, the first game of the first series of the day, I should say. So it is a bit of a liability, but uh, still waiting to see what Navi wants to do now. Navi actually banned out the Bounty Hunter, and really, I mean, they need more punching power, so it's understandable. They probably didn't want it for that reason, but Fnatic just focusing on getting rid of the CK and the OD. Uh, Puck is available for Navi to draft out if they want, certainly one of Dindy's best heroes. Storm Spirit also available as well. I feel like Storm would fit in quite well with this sort of a lineup, give them even more initiation range and potential. Yeah, Nature's Prophet would have been good for them, but it was first banned by Na'Vi. Um, so, yeah, I think OD is a really good ban by Fnatic just because Dendi has been playing that hero almost nonstop, I'd say, for the past uh, little bit of time. And still taking their time looking to show us uh, what they want to do. I really would like to see an Invoker pick up here from Fnatic. Invoker is just one of those heroes that... I mean, depending on how you build him, Quas Exhort, especially if he goes um, solo mid, which tends to be the case. But he can begin to add a lot to your team fight once he uh, manages to get through that early laning phase. Say he begins to put more points into Wex, you get uh, the ability to use Alacrity on a hero like an Enchantress, who will use that to pour out impetus damage, so on and so forth. And certainly with Tornado and EMP, that combination is potent as, as it's always been. It's a nice little reset button to any attempted IO gank. And uh, very tough for a Chin to push into as well. So Navi spending a lot of their bonus time already, and we already see Fnatic has eaten through theirs as well. So the second half of this draft should come very, very quickly as soon as we see what Navi wants to uh, wants to run coming out of this third pick. Down to two and to one, and Clockwork going to be the pickup. Yeah, I'm surprised Clocker wasn't picked up earlier. Often it is maybe first, sometimes second pick. Uh, when it comes to these two teams, the surprise ban out here is the Windrunner coming out from uh, Fnatic. But mm -hmm. it is still rather unclear as to what Navi is going to pair up with the EO. We've seen them run it with Gyrocopter. Um, what else have we seen them run it with? I mean, Alchemist is pretty standard. CK banned out. Uh, Tiny is what Fnatic Tiny likes to run. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't really think they're really pigeonholed into anything. Yeah, as of right now, um, I'm kind of like you. I'm thinking of, of all the heroes they could potentially run with this. There are a lot of interesting ways you can run it, too. I'm not saying they will, but another hero that you can kind of put off till a late pick if you want to try and do something unorthodox is an Ursa pick. Picking up an Ursa um, to go with the IO can actually be very, very strong. Fnatic, I'm going to go ahead and pick up a second core here. That'll be the Weaver, and uh, we saw Hani also run Weaver in game two of our first series of the day ran Weaver in mid. So that very well could be era farming the alchemist with Weaver handled by Hani in mid. I would actually really like that out of them, get a good start to Weaver, at least get him some levels and hopefully an early survivability item be to BKB 
or a uh, or a Lincoln Sphere, what have you, and just try to secure Free Farm for the Alchemist. Let him get some early points into Greville's Greed, and then force Navi to execute into you. They're going to go ahead and grab a Bristleback. Now, we've been seeing more and more Bristleback, and he can be an absolute terror to deal with if he's able to get a decent start. That's going to be the challenge for Fnatic, is what do you prioritize, your own farm and a good start for your own heroes, and then have to worry about a late-game Bristleback, or do you go ahead and try to put pressure on when you can? They need disables on Navi, though. They don't have anything to lock down the Weaver right now, which is somewhat problematic. And I expect them to do an EO and Bristleback lane, so the last pick will be for Dendi. I think Storm is probably the most obvious pick here. Mm -hmm. um, anything else is... Mm, looking into other heroes, it's probably the best pick for them right now. Yeah, I think Storm's Spirit, we seconds. mentioned that Remain before. Me. With the Puck band out, Storm really does make the most sense. Five but as you mentioned, Remain I mean... Me. That only gives them a very, very limited amount of abilities. They can actually do something to lock down uh, the Weaver. And Venomancer now adds a little bit more team fight to Fnatic. Gives them a little bit more lane strength. And this is actually going to be a very, very dangerous early uh, laning trio of Enchantress, Visage, and Venomancer. Again, most likely it'll be Weaver doing his thing in mid based on what we've seen in the Farming Alchemist. But they they have a lot of... Uh, a lot of punching power early on. I mean, leading off with an unstable concoction, having Enchantress with Enchant to slow if she wants to roam and gank early. Ten Visage seconds, with Grave remaining. Chill and, of course, Soul Assumption. Weaver uh, is always going to have Shikuchi spam. So Five they have a nice, a, a nice little load up of early game magic damage, Stop. which is going to force Snavi to make sure that when they move, they move safely. Yeah, these bands and picks are a little bit different. Venomancer often uh, first pick, so it's Clockwork. So these teams draft a little bit differently, but they faced off so many times in the past couple of weeks that um, they can just ban out against each other as opposed to what is the current uh, hot picks and popular stuff going on. Yeah, and the Storm Spirit does uh, round out Navi's front five. I don't think, yeah, no surprise there. It gives them some much-needed range, but... This is not a team that I... I mean, when I look at Navi's lineup, they just don't have a whole lot of room for error. They don't really have heroes who are going to play catch-up very well. I mean, Clockwork, a good example of that. A hero who can do a lot with a very little amount of farm so long as he's okay in levels, but does begin to diminish in his value if he doesn't... If he isn't able to get up a handful of items like a Force Staff, a Scepter, what have you. Storm Spirit, very much the same way. Very much needs an Orchid and a BKB to feel fully effective around 30 minutes in. And uh, Bristleback, very much the same as well. Whereas Fnatic, again, as we already mentioned, uh, Fnatic just has so many single-target abilities they can use in so many ways. I mean, Soul Assumption plus uh, Unstable Concoction alone. Those two abilities early on are going to be able to blow up any kind of a squishy support, especially a hero like a Chin. Mm-hmm. And yeah, they still really don't have that much lockdown on Navi, so I think that it's going to be really important for them to secure farm on Storm Spirit. And Puppy does usually do a pretty good job of babysitting Dendi in mid, but I think he needs, he's going to need his Orchid ASAP. But it's even important to kill heroes like Alchemist before he can get his ultimate up. Um, and maybe while he's channeling Unstable Concoction, being able to Orchid him is just so important. So mm -hmm. I think that should be Navi's priority, along with getting levels on Wisp and uh, farm secured on Bristleback. On the flip side, uh, Fnatic, they just need to get farm up on Alchemist and Weaver. They have the ability to put a lot of pressure with Enchantress and Venomancer early on the Chen, so uh, they can try and shut down the jungling ability from Navi. We can see both teams moving as five, prioritizing the Radiant Side jungle. And we'll see who's going to spot who. Puppy's leading with the snout here. Dindy's right behind him. And we can see Dindy has been pulled quite a lot. He's got a salve and an early null talisman. And Fnatic now walking through the remnant. Flies there, has Gale skilled. Has yet to have a chance to lose it. They do go ahead and get a ward down. So they know exactly where they are. They're going to spot Funic. Avost is there too. And... The unstable concoction connects on Bristleback. Havost in trouble. That'll be first blood. Era takes it. He's now looking for safety. He is cut off, though. So it will be at least a one-for-one -one trade. And uh, here, Nature's Attendance being used behind the fight. And we can actually see they managed to get Funic and make it two for one so far. No-tail, though, taking a bit of right click. Here comes Dindy trying to catch him with the help of Kuroki. Should be able to snag him. Era's there. Auto attacks enough to bring it down. Now Era wants to re-engage. This is a terrible decision as Puppy, caught out by himself, should end up being traded away as well. Navi should have taken that kill and backed instead of hung around and let Era re-engage as the rest of Fnatic rotates over. Dendi 
tries to hide and salve himself to safety, but the stun will be there. That's going to make it a four for two trade. Favoring Fnatic, six kills on the board the first 30 seconds. Yeah, I think uh, I think our prediction that we'd see some early action is seeing itself come true here, Merlini. Yeah, I'm surprised that Clockwork didn't use his Kaga a little bit earlier. He used it right as the votes died, and then uh, they were doing all they can to uh, prevent him from dying, too. He was in a okay position. He has a stout shield. He was tethered up by the Wisp, but they really needed that Kaga early. Kuroki is caught out of no man's land. Looks like he may be able to get a tether away in time. Yep. Manages the hookup with Dindy, and Dindy actually won't be in mid. It'll be Havos taking the bristle mid against Hani, who's actually on the mid visage. So that's something fun to see nonetheless. And it's actually going to be Funik who's babysat by Puppy here in this off lane while Trixie solo lanes the Weaver. Down at bottom, we can see Era handling the Alchemist, trying to find his farm. He's actually skipped his second point into Acid Spray, and instead taking early points into Grievel's Greed with Fly here to help along with No Tail. Yeah, and Dendi is not getting anything in this early game. He is still level one, one and a half minutes, and he, they do need to secure his farm for Vos in a lot of trouble. Oh, yeah. Fly there, hits the Gale. Some damage is being done, but Soul Assumption enough to secure yet another kill for Fnatic. And as we can see, we mentioned it during the draft, this just is not a lineup that has a lot of room for error. They don't really have a lineup that can play especially well from behind, while Fnatic has been putting great use are putting uh, putting to use to great effect all of those uh, all of that early game magic damage all of that early game punching power we are going to see puppy go ahead and rotate down towards mid pretty much non-stop action so far seven kills in two minutes are going to look to make it eight honey being pursued up to the enemy's high ground moving in the wrong direction my friend that's not your side of the jungle throws out the grave chill and the net is there that was a long range net it was he will be cleaned up though so they managed to make it three to five and a lot of back and forth so far. Early on, though, Fnatic still in the lead. Yeah, uh, just a slight gold lead, 750. Uh, what's more important is that Era is getting a lot of farm, and Dendi, Kuroki, and Puppy are all they're relatively under-farmed, I'd say, and Vos has died two times now. So all in all, it's a very good early game for uh, Fnatic. On the top lane, funny, just for Strixie. Nothing special going on there. Yeah, we see they have rotated quite a bit. Now, Era... Looking to make something happen on Havos as Vino has rotated over. Here comes Kuroki and Puppy, though. A bit of an overextension, perhaps, from Fnatic. They're going to cost him at least era, if not more. Tried to use the wand charges, but No Tail was late in getting there. And Fly forced to go ahead and retreat. So nice anticipation coming out of Navi as they sniffed it out and got there just in time. Yeah, the solo myth visage is a little bit strange, but it's not that bad. I've seen it done before. If you can get early medallion, you can just do Rojan so fast, especially with someone like Enchantress who can just get creeps or tank herself or Venomancer who gets wards. No uh, plague wards up yet for Venomancer, but he is still only level two. Great uh, rotation by both teams. Very, very even game at this point. Despite his problems, the Vos is actually doing all right farm wise, sitting at 13. He's third on the board. Um, certainly not fantastic but is getting something done we can see fly poking his nose around he's actually kind of sandwiched in a little bit here and uh, has to retreat all the way back towards the tower to keep himself safe up at top weaver not doing as well as he would like tricks he's actually being shoved around very effectively he's only got six cs to the 20 of funix so far and funix clock is no joke both in lane and in terms of when he begins to roam here's going to be a quick enchant as we see uh, puppies creep stolen away, and that's something we can expect to see a lot of this game. It's pretty much the entire purpose of that early Enchantress pick, trying to ward off a Chin pick because of that. Yeah, they've been doing really uh, well at just staving off the aggression from Fnatic, though. They have the slightly better or actually, I'd say they have the much better early dual room because of the Enchantress and Venomancer. Venomancer are uh, much stronger than Wisp and Chen, and Enchantress are slightly equivalent. Enchantress can get more creeps, but um, Chen does more bursts, so it's just a little bit of a trade-off there. Oh, chicken in a little bit of trouble. Yep, actually took a tower shot there. Dindy was leading with uh, the beak. Now we're going to have a Vos, a Dove on bottom. There's the Gale to follow up. The Unstable Concoction, no tails there to help out. Chasing him all the way down into the woods. Not seeing a reaction yet. And the Quills doing a bit of damage, but with no one on the way to help out. Ends up dropping very easily. Now they might push off of that. Hani looks to be the target in mid. As a reprisal kill, though, as Puppy's there, has his creep with him, and Kuroki right behind him. And uh, Dindy, not yet level 6, though. Dindy was level 6. This would be an easy dive, as is. They're still going to have to be very careful in how they execute it. Mm -hmm. Yes, they are. And here they come. Hani, 
And trying to get the, uh, the courier out of the way. Honey got caught out there. Well done that time. And actually doing good damage to the puppy, so trades himself away for a chin kill. And they I stack the stuns. Chin yeah. stun on the centaur as well as the uh, overload, or the vortex rather. They mm -hmm. were at the same time. And we can see Fnatic has all but laid claim to this bottom tower. Havost having to play very, very close to the bone. The tower at only 465 HP will drop relatively soon. Here we go. They're going to go for it again. Fly might end up dead here if he's not real careful. Here comes the TPs in. No Tail has to back out through the back. It's a face full of goo as Funic arrives. Funic is six but doesn't have enough mana to throw the hook. Oh, nice stomp on the Era as Kuro hooked up with him. They managed to pick off the Enchantress. Now they're trying to chase down Era. Funic, again, doesn't have enough mana for a hook. And Era throws out the Unstable Concoction. Is it enough? Rocket from downtown secures the kill. Chased by birds. And we can see Avost able to make it away with just about 70 HP. So a lot, 14 kills in six and a half minutes. This uh, early game one, not failing to live up to the billing this series had coming in. Funnick does use the wand charges, now has enough for a hook, and not going to use it. Going to instead just go ahead and cog. He will end up just eaten alive, though. Cannot engage into a visage at this level that has uh, had such an, an easy time in mid, comparatively, anyway. He's already level seven. His damage output is considerable. Yeah, uh, I have no idea what he was doing walking up the hill, but um, Fnatic has, still has vision in this area. They lay down the wards a little bit late. Looks like first tower of the game might go down on top lane. No tail pressuring that, and there's just been so much movement going around everywhere. Uh, Gold Graph actually slightly in favor um, in Navi after, even despite being one kill behind. And here we go. Onto no tail. They do with a haste. Vortex is no tail back. Should be a simple kill. Oh, nature's attendance, though. So tough to bring down an early game enchantress if she gets off nature's attendance. Most heroes just don't have the burst to bring her down. And we saw that there. And that's going to end up costing them a free tower at bottom as Fnatic just trying to open this map up and doing a fairly effective job so far. Yeah, the one point in Untouchable helps a lot too. 30% attack speed slow. Yeah. Um, Denny doesn't have treads yet, so he, he's unable to get the usual jump combo, Vortex, and then Remnant. The lift popped in mid, just heard a hook run right into someone's back, I'm going to guess. Now Puppy caught out, uses Hand of God. They're going to try to re-engage. Dendi's got to be careful, though. Stunned out by the Visit Familiars and watch his health melt. He'll try to jump away. We'll be able to make it back to the safety of the river. Kuro not likely to be as lucky. Dindy survives yet another soul assumption. And Kuro does manage to hook up with Funic via Tether to remain safe. And uh, Havos now a bit in no man's land being pursued out. And it's Battle of the Creeps. As we see creeps from both sides going back and forth. Hani now going to be netted down. Havos is there doing what damage he can. Stun out from the Centaur though. Locks him down. Will they be able to catch him? Unstable Concoction tossed out onto Io. Havos trying to re-engage. There's a jump from Dindy going after Hani. Now decides to back out. Dodges the Gale. A lot of back and forth. An absolute tug of war here in this mid lane. Fnatic trying to set their heels and trying to look for a way to re-engage, but they might be a little too banged up. And Na'Vi making this lineup work. We see Fly down. In the meantime, though, Trixie does manage to take another Tier 1 tower. There's an unstable concoction on Havos. Can they follow it up? There's the Acid Spray and the Gale's there. They've got the Visage Familiars there to pour out the damage. The Quill Spray, though, is considerable. They can't rush in all jumped up like that or all bunched up. Puppy manages to get the Stomp following the net on the fly. That will not be a kill as the Wand Chargers are there. We see another creep stolen. Kuro tethers right to it, and they're trying to pursue him out. The Spirits will be enough, but now it's going to end up being a one-for-one -one trade as they manage to lock him down. TP back in. Then he decides to jump. He's got about half a bar of mana as he makes it to the high ground. And, and Trixie now spawning him out. We'll do what damage you can. No tails right behind him. There's the courier that gets picked off for free. And Dindy still trying to bottle himself to safety. There's a Grave Chill forcing another jump. And here's another creep stolen as Puppy steals it right back afterwards. So he's going to make it back to the other side of the river. And finally, I might get, take, get to take a breath. The result, 10 to 9, but it did cost Navi yet another tower. These magic sticks on the side of Fnatic are causing a lot of problems. They're so close to getting a lot of kills. Venomance are almost side here, but he managed to make it all the way back to the T2. Uh, Funic misses Rocket there and the magic stick, though, with uh, someone like Storm who casts a lot of spells. Bristle constantly spraying 
and someone like uh, Clockwork even, who has fairly short cooldown on his spells too. They are just building up those magic charges and um, it is really, really effective in this early game. And Fnatic, pretty sizable uh, lead after taking down those two towers. Looks like 3,000 gold difference. Era um, actually has a hand of Midas as well as a phase boost. So I think that they will win out the creep war with the Midas and with the Enchantress uh, with Enchant and with almost a second Midas coming out on Enchantress. Chen's going to have a hard time finding any of his creeps um, in finding any creeps to keep alive in the team fights. Actually going to be a third Midas if no Tail's able to complete it, as there's already another one up on Trixie, who just finished the item himself. It's being flown out to him as we speak. So the Creep War, not going to be a war that Navi can really afford to fight right now. Uh, Havos could potentially be looking for one of his own. He's got about 1,200 gold in the bank, and we'll find out. Trixie just receives his Midas. Navi trying to make something happen at the Tier 1. There is no Glyph, but they are going to engage. Funnick spotted out. Caught out with the unstable concoction. Gale's there to follow it up. Down go the cogs. The disjoint things. The stomp's going to be off the mark. No tail. Trying to heal him up, but decent amount of damage being done. There's Hand of God to get their gloves back up. Kuro ends up dying as there's a hook from Funnick. Has a chance to catch a couple, but Dendi re-engaging. Fly pursued back near his own Tier 1. They will trade Fly for Funnick. Dendi, though, going to go ahead and jump back forward. Arrow wants to re-engage. Hani trying to make a run for it. Cleaned up with Overload. That's a triple kill for Dendi as he shows why his Storm Spirit is one of the most feared in the West, especially at this phase of the game. Going to catch out Trixie as well. He will be able to Shikuchi to safety as the stomp is off the mark from uh, Puppy's Centaur that time. But the tower at top also likely to end up dropping. They still don't have a glyph, and Havos might be in some trouble as they look to catch him out. So hanging around a little too long, and he'll end up being traded away for free. I think that's not that bad of a trade for Havos getting that tower, though. They desperately needed some gold. It would have been better if he had spent his gold, but still not that bad. Dendi is finally getting some farm. He is in a lot of trouble, though. He's surrounded by a lot of red dots. Balls around to the other side, and we'll be able to hook back up with Puppy. So, uh, yep, he will go ahead and be sent back to base. Uh, going for a jump before being sent home. So, Fnatic going to fall back to regroup a little bit, as will Na'Vi. We've got 25 kills in a 12-minute game. Gold Graph tells us it's to the advantage of Fnatic, and now they're going to go ahead and smoke and look to push that lead even more. Yep, Fnatic may be the target out in mid. Kuroki hit level 7. That was a really important relocate there. If they hadn't uh, been there with a the relocate, it would have been like an easy 2-0, 3-0 for Fnatic. They just had so many people there, and Fnatic got caught out. Looks like they will go into the smoke or go into the Roche pit. Kuroki is there. Is he going to scout it out? With oh, there's a rocket. Roche at about yeah, half health. To react. Yep. They got to get there quick, though. Dindy likely to just go for a jump. Roche at half health. Will they decide to come on out? They will. They're going to go ahead and retreat at least momentarily. Dindy sitting up on the high ground. They're looking for a target. And they did manage to hit Kuroki with the unstable concoction, but he was tethered to safety. So for the moment, Fnatic's plan thwarted. Looking to use acid spray in conjunction with Visage's early medallion. And the reduced armor those two bring in to uh, sneak Roshan, and Navi sniffed it out. That was really important for them to sift it out because Fnatic is like very close to running away with this game with um, the pressure from the three Midas's, uh, a few towers on it. And with that Aegis, they could have just taken down a T1 and then passively farmed it up and just kind of screw over Chen with his um, with the three Midas's. But now after that, they've thwarted it and uh, they did lose vision over this area. Nice sentry and ward coming out from Venomancer. Um, so Navi doesn't won't have vision for a while. They actually laid a ward over here right on top of the sentries too. So Frantic may have pretty good map control, especially considering it just hit nighttime, man. With those two observer wards down, it's going to be a lot of trouble for them. Era might scout it out now. Nope. Oh, yep. Yep. Yep, now he knows. That's that's really bad for Navi though, because now they don't have any vision, and they've already lost two T1 towers, and if they take a bad fight, they lose a T1 as well. As oh, Roshan. Havos. Way too high all by himself. Rest of his team was behind it, but they were down in the river. And Havos playing a little too bravely there. Gives one away for free. And with him down for 28 seconds, buyback is not an option. Yep, this should be a free Roshan for them. No way they can fight without him. Yep, Medallion up on Visage too. This thing is going to drop too fast for them. Maybe a hookshot from Funnick, but with the Gargoyles placed as they are, I don't think he's going to be able to steal it. Maybe he's Dendi can jump in. It's still a really long shot, though. He's going to go for it, and Enchantress actually grabbed it. No Tail might lose it just as quick. Funnick 
does manage to pop it, ends up trading himself away. Kuro going to go ahead and tether back up to the high ground to one of Chin's creeps. There's Hand of God. They actually want to fight this. Hani, in the meantime, gets another kill. Good poison, Nova. Got Kuro and Puppy. Puppy just completely evaporates. And that's a triple kill going the way of Hani. Dendi actually just spent a buyback. And Havost is back up now and may be looking to fight. Uh, could be a wasted buyback. They need to get something here. Havost caught out once again with Grave Chill followed by the Gale. He's down to half health. They're going to jump on Trixie. Vortex back. That's going to be a good kill for them. They're going to end up trading Havos for it, though, as he's cleaned up with auto attacks. Dindy might decide to jump on Fly or No Tail. Fly uh, will die to one last auto attack. Dindy's out of mana, though. There's a tether up. Isn't enough? No. Soul Assumption makes it another double kill going the way of Hani. Hani at this point is 10 and 3, running the solo mid visage to great effect. And on the back of all this, the net worth beginning to climb higher and higher in favor of Fnatic. They now have three of the top four in terms of pure farm. Yes, they lost the ages, but the goal graph and experience graph heading heavily in their favor now. Yeah, Hani doesn't even have that many items either. Like, all he has is a medallion bottle, all these small items on him, and he's just able to contribute so much because he has so many levels. They have three level 11 heroes on Fnatic, and Navi, they only have one level 11 hero, and it's just going to get worse, and the experience graph uh, disparity is going to keep getting worse and worse. Navi were actually up ahead prior to that Roshan fight, and they were really close to stealing it, too. I don't even think they had Vision. He just jumped in and hook chat at the same time, but they were just slightly off the mark. If they had picked up the Aegis on either funny or Dendi, it would have been a completely different fight. But now Havos is getting to that point where he's really under farm and he is going to keep on dying and dying. Yeah, they have to tether. Yeah, they have Chen heal as well as relocate and send back, but it's only going to do so much when um, Fnatic is just going to keep getting more and more items. Visage will have a Scepter soon. Alchemist, uh, I don't know what he's doing with the Bit Booster, but he'll have big items soon. And Weaver, the three Midas is really, uh, really bad for them when Navi is constantly behind on kills. And Dindy going to jump right into the heart of the storm. There's a vortex on the area. He jumps back out. Cogs go down from Funic. But look at the damage output. Here comes Havost and Kuroki. And Havost trying to do what he can. Nice damage from the Quill Spray. But beautiful stunts from the Visage Familiars. Delay things a bit. They do manage to pick off Hani. Puppy will be cleaned up. And Havost runs into the Roche pit. Sorry, Roche ain't home. That's going to be a kill picked up by Era. Another very favorable trade, and it ain't done yet. Dendi eating a lot of damage. Time lapse by uh, the Weaver gets him back to safety. That familiar stun was ridiculously good oh, by it was. Honey. It was so good. And well, I'll tell you what the issue is becoming now is where's the damage? I mean, Havos came into the fight there, and he did a decent amount with Quill Spray, and we can see he's looking to grab himself a blade mail now, and that'll certainly help some. But Fnatic is just able to burst down Heroes. Nice hook from Funic on to Fly. Fly gets off the Poison Nova. Era might want to re-engage. Funic taking a bit of damage, but too much help from Na'Vi. And now Era going to be Vortex back from Dendi. And no tail there. Looking for a kill. Won't get it. Might get one on Kuroki, though. And Storm actually does end up dying to Venno's Poison. So they end up getting a two-for-one there, trading a Venomancer for Storm. And... These deaths on Dendi are just setting him back so, so far. Yeah, he is still pretty close to his Orchid, though. He managed to buy the recipe before he died. Um, so he just needs maybe like 800 more gold until his uh, until his Orchid. But is it going to matter that much? It's not going to come out at a great time, maybe mm -hmm. like 22, 23 minutes. And Alchemist almost has his AC completed. Uh, Scepter very, very close to being finished on Visage. I don't think they're going to have the items to compete because Bristleback's farm is not that great either. He just has almost a Blade Mail. Uh, no mech completed yet on Chen. Um, Kuro doesn't really have anything on the EO either. Just Tranquil Boot, Soul Ring Bottle, all these really small items. And the Gold Graph still getting worse and worse for Na'Vi. About 7,000 in favor of Fnatic right now. Blade Mail just finished up. And Era, as you mentioned, Assault Curass almost done. Has the Plate Mail and the Chain Mail. We'll have his Hyperstone up momentarily. Take a look at Hani. Scepter very, very uh, close to being done. And even Fly's tanking up, having picked up a point booster now. And again, it comes down to the same issue. Where's the damage? They, the longer these fights go, the more they benefit Navi because of the power of Warpath and Quill Spray. But the big issue is that these yeah, fights... Yeah, can't survive, though. Yeah, exactly. That's the problem. The burst is there, and it's, not, and it's all, almost all magical. I mean, we haven't even seen Era contribute all that much in terms of pure right-click. But you've got the pure damage from Impetus, from... Uh, 
from the Enchantress and all the magic damage we've talked about all game long, and he's just not able to contribute as much as they need him to because the team as a whole is dying too quickly. Mm -hmm. Now, now they're doing ancient stacks now. Fnatic has very good map control right now. If they can uh, persist for the next three or four minutes, Puppy about to die. Oh, well, they just, they completely ignore him. They were looking at um, bottom, but yeah, Puppy does not have a TP scroll, so he's going to have to spend his money. And not a whole lot to spend, only 400 in the bank. Um, it's going to set back the mech top, again. So it's not, it's not that bad for him. And free kill there. Kuro, as you mentioned, trying to Dyer's split push top. and Split push potential of a, an, an IO, not necessarily the best you've ever seen. Fnatic might look to go ahead and pressure the tier 2 bottom now. They know Puppy has Hand of God on cooldown for at least a little bit longer, but it'll be back oh, up. Oh, Orchid already up on Storm. I don't know. I, I guess he maybe had something in the bank, but I didn't see it already on him. Yep. Trixie getting very close to his Lincoln Sphere. We're going to see Havost up at top. And they're going to have to send someone home to try and stop it. That'll be Era. And they're going to engage immediately. Era going toe-to-toe -to -toe with him. Eating the Quill Spray and using his regen to survive through it. Here comes another TPN. And Havost will eat the unstable concoction. That's no tail. And Chant will be there. And... Uh, they could probably just about bring down Kuro. Now the blade mail's up, though. They got to really watch themselves. There's nature's attendance and a little help from the rockets. Nice gale, but we're beginning to see the power of Bristleback right when they need it most. And they're going to go ahead and try to get someone out of dodge. And actually, it was just Kuro. Thought he was tethered up, but wasn't. The rest of Navi has reacted up, though, so Fnatic has to get back in a bit more of a defensive position. That's just underestimating the power of Cool Spray. Like, he wasn't taking that much damage, and then, boom, you have, like, four or five seconds. You just get wrecked as soon as he pops his magic wand and blade mail. So I don't think he knew that he had blade mail right there, but Bristol actually catching up in items quite quickly. 1,700 gold after the blade mail. Navi find their way right back into the game. About 6,000 gold Radiant's difference, but tower. it's not that bad as long as they don't give up the next Roshan. So Navi Navi still needs to keep up the pressure because if they just play passively for the next three or four minutes, Fnatic is going to accrue gold at a faster rate and um, just be strong enough to defend that Roshan pit unless Navi buys back a couple of times, but you really don't want to be buying back when your storms are already a little bit under farm. And they take the tier two top. Only tier two mid and tier one and two bottom remain now for Fnatic. So a couple of tower pickoffs for Navi. That'll help get the gold graph moving a bit more in their direction. Taking a look at how Fnatic's moving along. We see Visage has finished his Scepter now. Most likely it's going to be a Scepter for No-Tail as well. And Fly, with his point booster, might very well be on his way to a Scepter as well. And that just goes to show, I mean, they are very much all in on their abilities and knowing what they can they can do to try and burst down these heroes to try. Yeah, And especially with the Poison Nova, a nice way to mitigate the advantage that Navi has whenever they extend these fights out. Speaking of extending the fights, Mechanism finally done on Puppy, coming out right at 23 minutes. Fnatic has a really good mix of damage. They have physical damage, uh, they have Medallion, they have um, Swarm, they have Acid Spray too, as well as the Visage Familiars too, for their mix of physical damage. They have a very nice mix of magical damage with Soul Assumption, Acid Spray, uh, Venomancer with Poison Nova, as well as Gale, and then pure damage too with Enchantress. So there's no like single item that Bristleback can get that can protect him from everything. He has to go for a mix of HP uh, and armor um, in order to mitigate this. They kind of do need a pipe, I think, in a later game, especially if Venomacer gets a Scepter. Um, but as of now, Navi, Navi holding in there. You can see Fnatic smoked up. Trixie shows his face. Freshly completed Lincoln Sphere, so his survivability much higher. Phonic might be looking to make something happen. He's now spotted out. And they jump right on him. There's the Orchid, but Dendi caught out with the immediate stun. Navi oh, took the bait hard. Bit hard on that. And now Funnick has to go running for safety. He's going to go ahead and hook to uh, some of Puppy's creeps to get himself to safety. The rest of Fnatic still pursuing him out. But it could have gone like, a lot worse for them there, to be, to be yeah. fair. And the top, Havos finding farm, doing his thing with Kuro, so... Not the end of the world. Roshan will be back up in very short order. Only about 60 seconds left now. Yeah, I think Heart's the right pickup for Bristleback, too. They're just going to like be dealing with enormous amounts of Quill Spray damage, and BKB or not, it's not going to matter. Same with Lincoln's. They it doesn't really do that much for Quill Spray. Oh! oh he's caught out. He's going to have to get relocated. Yep. And sent back. This should be a free kill. This is... Yeah. Unless, unless, we unless he some, pulls like, a no-tail. Yeah. <laughs> yeah what, what in the world was that? Let's see if he can do it. I, I have no idea. I'm watching Kuroki. Yep, I'm watching here, so. 
Up oh, there we go. Yeah. <laughs> See, <laughs> just Heather. But uh, for those who don't know what we're to what we're referring, in our first match, Fnatic ran Io and uh, tethered at just the right millisecond in such a way. Whenever the tether or whenever the relocate was about to send him back in a situation almost exactly like that, and it actually just stalled it, just sent him right back, and uh, he actually remained safe. And we actually asked No Tail about that. And he said he had no clue. He was just doing it to try and be annoying, basically. But uh, Cyborg Matt, as we can see, has reported the issue. I'm sure he's typing in all caps on the dev forums as we speak. Roshan now, the target for Fnatic. He needs a rocket, like, right now. It's already a half. It might be too late already. Dendi's too far away. Funnick a little bit too far away. Funnick actually used the rocket in mid. I think someone pinged it out for them, but... Uh, yeah, Fnatic already with the Roshan, so now things are really, really bad for Na'Vi. I don't know if they can come back for the next Roshan. They really uh, couldn't couldn't take a death right before that and give it up uncontested. And now it's just a matter of patience uh, from Fnatic and not giving up free towers, not dying to relocate ganks or storm ganks. Era tosses out the unstable concoction. Dindy's there to help out. And uh, he's got an Aegis, but not willing to go ahead and commit again. Now Dindy's going to go ahead and jump, grabbing him out, flies there. Big poison over cop, more than a few. Navi mecking through it as they try to retreat now. And we see the creeps dying to a lot of hand of Midas's. And Havost eating a lot of damage in the back, pops his blade mail. There's the Visage Familiar stun, soul assumption there. To do a little bit more burst, Dindy down to about a quarter health. Has to be careful here in mid. We actually see Funnick very low to Trixie. And now they're going to go ahead and grab a Vost out. There's the jump in from Dindy. Hand of God kept a Vost alive, and he might get away because of it. He will. Era has to double back. Flies in trouble. Dindy bouncing back and forth. And Era has to run away. So they do manage to get the Veno. And beautiful, beautiful hand of God timing coming out of Puppy. Might not be so lucky himself, though, as Trixie's there to clean him up. They do manage to get another kill. This is going to be a big turnaround now. And Na'Vi making the cardinal mistake and just hanging around too long. Gave Trixie time enough to rotate, Era time enough to get back up, get healed up because of his regen. And uh, that ends up being a four for one, even though it looked good for a moment. Yeah, they could have gotten away there. Like, they can just use a defensive relocate and get a replenish uh, Bristlebacks mana HP. They could have sent someone back to and then TP back to the fight. So it could have been, like, three full HP, three uh, full mana heroes right back mm, pretty close to that area. But they were just waiting around without any steam left in them. And, yeah, Fnatic, too. They didn't lose the ages in that fight. Era is getting massive. Trixie getting massive, too. Hani already massive. And... They can just pretty much take the T2s. They don't really need to um, take any extreme risk right now. They can definitely take a good engagement with the Aegis. And if Navi trades poorly, it should probably be a oh. good Visit familiar. So there here comes Dende off the relocate. Looking to jump around. Hani going to be Vortex back. He'll be brought down. And Kuro cleaned up by the Visage familiar. So they end up trading one for one. The Visage for the Io. Now Funic caught inside with Trixie. Trixie avoiding that blade mail, eating a bit of damage. There's a time lapse and we'll be able to clean him up. Now Dindy jumping back in and stunned out by the familiars once again. Fly. Pursued out by Havost. Havost will secure that kill. Let's see if he can get away. Trixie, no tail and arrow right on his tail. He's got unstable concoction in one second. Now he's got it up and we'll look to spend it. He's got 4,500 gold in the bank as well and... Do they have the damage? Uh, Trixie's got to be careful. He doesn't have time lapse, but they've got the pure damage output. And that's what we were talking about during the draft. We knew that could become a huge liability. The pure amount of burst they have to bring him down at this stage of the game is becoming overwhelming. Yep, Desolator too on Weaver. We're talking about maybe minus 20 armor, Desolator, Swarm, Medallion, and Acid Spray. And Bristleback, he has some armor too, Blade Mill, but it's just too much damage to deal with the item differences. A little bit too much. Rex will fall very easily. Nendi needs a BKB very badly because he keeps getting stunned by the familiars, but still about close to 3,000 gold away from Oh, that. Puppy bails himself out with a stomp there and uses Hand of God. And uh, the back, we see the Lincolns pop. Dindy doing what he can. Drops down the sentry. Trixie able to retreat. They already got one set of racks. There's a good hook from Funic. And No Tail there to help get some payback, though. Two for one, the current trade. Dindy jumps back in, looking to grab Era. Era still has the Aegis up. And the rest of Navi now on the warpath. And he's just going to go to work and do what he can. He's tanky enough. He can just turn and fight. And he's going to be able to kill Puppy. Oh, he oh, silenced. Oh, 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 oh. Wow. That poor familiar. Quieted 
by Dindy instead of Aaron ends up resulting in a death for Puppy. 39 to 24 at 30 minutes in. And Havost at this point has done about as much as you can ask out of a bristleback, but the pick itself just not panning out that well. Tier 1 in mid going to drop in the meantime. The Wisp pick isn't really panning out for them either. Kiro's 3, 8, and 14. He's been there for a lot of kills, but he's pretty much done everything a Wisp can do because Fnatic's just been 5 man the whole entire time, and their 5-man is just way stronger. Chen, yeah. not that great on 5-man, especially with the Mass Midas. Uh, Storm Spirit, not that strong because he keeps dying because he doesn't have a BKB, and Fly may die here. May die, but will it cost them more? Dindy's going to be caught out on the high ground, and he's just chopped to pieces. The damage is just too high right now. Havost even brought down quite low. Counter hook from Funnick. Hani locked inside. The familiars are there, though. And just look at them melt these heroes down. There's a mechanism to get them back up and ready to fight. Hani's still alive through it all. Familiar's not going to be picked off either. Just heard an unstable concoction. That caught Puppy behind his own tower. No tails there. Throwing out the spears. Era will be able to get the kill on the Puppy. Maybe. And soul assumption not enough by itself. Penitence on the Era. Slowing his retreat. He's going to go in and throw the unstable concoction. Still not enough to get the kill, but the tier two, not nice really a question. Like and the Aegis is still yet to be to be popped, by the way. There's been three or four fights in which you would have thought for sure Arrow would have died, but uh, looks like it's going to be reclaimed naturally now. Yeah, I thought that arrow was going to die too, but he's just extremely tanky right now. 1,800 damage. They don't really have that much burst either from Na'Vi. They have like hookshot and a storm jump, but that's not really that much uh, because they don't have really have anything to follow up. Maybe a ton of cool spray stacks, but Havos is pretty much their own only source of damage right now, and he does have his heart, so how Na'Vi needs to win a fight is pretty much, hey, well, let's just go on Havos and then keep him up with the Tether, Overcharge, uh, Chen heal, Chen mech, uh, send back if they have to, call on the opponent's heroes, and then once they get like four or five cool spray stacks, then you can turn the fight around, then he can jump in, hopefully he can farm, farm up his BKB soon, but he has been involved in a lot of these fights and a lot of deaths, 9, 8, and 9 on him. We have almost everybody has died eight times on Navi. Yep. And I'll tell you what the new meta is. It's build a hand of minus, build a scepter. That's kind of just been what's happened as Fly has finished his enchantress with her minus and a scepter of her own. Of course, Visage with a scepter and the Midases on Weaver and on Alchemist. Yeah, they have three scepters. That's ridiculous. Dindy, eating a lot of damage, has a full mana pool, though. So we'll get banged up, but should be able to make it away pretty safely and does. We got 66 kills on the board in a 32-minute game. We have averaged more than two kills a minute since the horn blew here, Merlini. Yeah, Navi is just trading, continuously trading poorly, though, um, in each of these fights. 20,000 gold difference for Fnatic, and with the next Aegis, it is going to be really difficult for them to come back. Bristleback, maybe he can pull through, though. Looking at his damage with four war uh, pass stacks on, he's at 280, almost 300 damage. And Puppy. Barely to able to make it away. A barely able to make it away, I should say, from the pursuit of the Visage Familiars. In the meantime, Navi is doing what they can, which is take towers. They're pushing the tier two bottom. Looks like Fnatic wants to fall back. They're going to TP a couple in. That's going to be Hani that lands in. Has to be careful. And here we go. There's a hook from Funic. Lands in, and Hani landing in a hot LZ and paying for it. Kuro. Trying to keep this fight going. Will be able to survive thanks to Puppy as he blows the hand of God. And Trixie now going hunting as well. Funnick spent the dust and will be spotted out by Era himself. Now Trixie and Havos going toe for toe. There's the blade mail popped. He's going to try to just TP away. Do they have a stun? Visage Familiar? Nope. Wow, the Visage Familiar had the cooldown. Yep. Up too. He could have stunned. Um, so very good trade for Navi though. Uh, killing. Hani making him buy back and killing Enchantress too. So that's about as good as it's going to get. Wisp actually uses Ghost Scepter. You can't, it's so difficult to tell when he's Ghost Scepter. He's like already a Shining Ball of Light anyways. Yep. Roche going to be back up here in about a minute and a half, give or take. Dindy in the meantime still trying to play catch up as best he can. <clears throat> take a look at the net worth. You can see he's nowhere near where he usually is on a Storm Spear at this stage of the game with this many kills. Sitting right in the middle of the pack, he's actually less farmed than the Visage at this point, and it's really costing him. He just has no innate survivability, and as good as he is on the hero, as much as he can make happen in a fight, he has to be able to, to jump in and know that if he... He needs to know that he can jump in and not get stunned and die, because what's happening is Fnatic is just outclassing them at damage output, and their focus fire, and as you mentioned, team fight, 
is so much better that as much as they can ask of a hero like a Storm Spirit, they just can't ask the impossible, which is for him to survive if he's ever locked down. Yeah, and now that they have Abyssal on Era, it's just going to be that much easier for them to lock him down. Oh, well, he actually has a BKB, but I don't really think it matters that much if he BKBs and jumps in and tries to stand still. He'll just get Abyssal and Medallion Focus with Familiars and just die really, really quickly too. So, although it's a nice pickup, Alchemist is just like pretty much two items ahead of him uh, with AC, Abyssal, and Heart at this point. Just take a look at the warding here, by the way. Coming out from... Fanatic, just very aggressive warding, shutting down an entire portion of the map. And now Roche spotted out. It's spotted by both sides as Phonix Rocket did see him respond. And they're going to go ahead and try to push again on the back of Avost and Kuro. Kuro getting into position to tether here near the woods. That's going to force a TP. And they're going to collapse on mass, and Havost is being blown up and bursted down, unable to get him away in time. And unfortunately, that's going to cost Kuro his life as well unless he pulls some tricky tricks. Doesn't have, uh, doesn't have any creeps to tether to, I don't suppose. We'll find out. Oh, sorry, Kuro, you're not no-tail. So another couple of deaths, and unfortunately, that's probably going to mean another free Roshan. Yeah, and Havos definitely did uh, definitely underestimated the damage output of Weaver. Weaver had a Desolator, Chrysalis, and a DD at that point, and um, usually a Bristleback with like 2600-ish, 2700-ish HP can survive, but he dropped in like two or three seconds. Speaking of, Roche not lasting a hell of a lot longer. And the Rocket will be there to spot it. We see Era did pick up the cheese. The Aegis goes to Weaver at this stage, which I don't think is any real surprise. He is large and in charge, hitting very, very hard. 250 a shot with the Midas armor to go with it and crit potential with the crystal is done. And Fnatic probably looking to close this one out. Navi has been Sans, one set of racks for a while, and this is probably going to be their last stand. Yeah, I definitely agree with you there. Well... Um, Bristleback, he kind of needs an AC at this point too, but I don't think he's going to be able to farm it before the game's over. I think he does have enough buyback even after picking up the plate mail. This tower is just melting. Yep. Havos comes out, shows his face. They're going to try to go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. And the tier 3 does drop. Era still has the cheese if he needs it. Vortex back, and that's what we're seeing Dindy do over and over again. Jump in, jump out. That's all he really can do. He can't really stay in these fights for a sustained amount of time. And we're going to see Hand of God used to keep Kuro alive. So they extend this out a little bit. Weaver, in the meantime, has finished his full Daedalus. And Fnatic seeming a little ham-handed. And this Tier 3 push are eating a lot of AoE damage. And looks like they're just going to go ahead and reset, look to do it again. Yep, they're still under no timeline. It's not like one item from Navi is really going to change things. It's not like they don't have a late game for most getting... Busted up. In the meantime, behind the fight, we see... Storm Spirit picked off following an unstable concoction. And with him down and with no buyback, don't know they have any way to stop this. Avos going to try to do what he can, but they don't attack him and just attack Rax. It just ain't that much. And Puppy now being melted down and cleaned up. Havos again, just running in circles. That's the entire set of mid racks cleaned up. And Poison Nova goes off. Kuro likely to be cleaned up off of that. Phonic drops the cogs. Unstable concoction will secure another kill. And Havos drops there. GG. I so, think a lot of this had to do with the draft. Uh, yeah. Like, Navi, I think they went in, into the game with the mindset, hey, if we deny Fnatic Whip, then we can take this pretty easily. And they gave up, what, Visage and Enchantress in return. And then they picked a Chen into an Enchantress, too. So the Chen pick didn't really work out for them because they got three Midas's up before 10 minutes. And then the Wisp pick didn't really work out for them either. And then the Visage just went crazy on them. And then after that, um, Fnatic, just five mans, negates the relocate potential from Wisp. The three Midas makes uh, Chen useless. And then meanwhile, their own supports have Midas's, they have uh, Scepters, and they're just able to have it a big effect like 20 minutes into the game. I think that Na'Vi uh, kind of got outdrafted in this matchup, and they definitely got outplayed too early. Four to two, and that early skirmish on bottom, and then uh, Fnatic just kind of ran away with the game after getting three Roshans in a row. Yeah, I agree with you. I mean, we talked about it during the draft. This just wasn't a team that Navi was going to be able to play from behind very effectively. And we saw that come into action. I mean, whenever Bristleback is your primary source of real damage output, um, Dindy, as you said, I mean, he wasn't super late to all of his items, but they just weren't on time 
uh, for him to have a big impact. He finished 9-9-9, nine, nine, and nine, so not to say he was completely quiet, but he basically was taking as good as he was giving. Then you compare that to uh, to what was going on with Fnatic. Era finishes up 13-5. and five. Of course, the standout, Hani, on the solo mid visage, who finishes the game 18-6. and six. And a very busy game, 38 minutes, 46 seconds. The official game time was 76 kills. A mass between these two teams, and Na'Vi takes a game one loss. And because of our format, they're now one game away from seeing their hopes for any advancement here in the D2L Season 4 brought to you by HyperX. They're very close to seeing their uh, to seeing their hopes for Vegas go up in smoke in front of their eyes. I'm your host, Aaron A.C. Chambers, the voice you're hearing on the other end of the mic. That's Ben Merlin. We want to thank you guys for being a part of the broadcast once again. And a reminder, this is only our second of four best of threes on the, on the uh, slate for today. This will be our last Western broadcast of the day, though. The winner of this will uh, advance to meet Team Liquid and our best of five playoff finals coming up on Thursday. So make sure you stay tuned for that. Coming up later this evening, 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, that'll be our Eastern bubble race getting underway with Tongfu versus DK and Vichy Game awaiting the winner of that in our second series of the East. And that'll be uh, kicking off again at 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Really hope all of you will be uh, alive and awake, especially European brothers and sisters to catch all of that action as well. So Fnatic takes a very impressive Game 1 win. They're going to look to make it their second sweep of the day. Na'Vi fighting for their lives has to win two in a row or go home packing. We'll be right back with Game 2 of this Best of 3 coming up next here on the HyperX D2L. Stick with us.